All right, the webinar started. Okay. Hello, now everyone. We're seeing, now we're seeing the partial screen, Brian. Okay, so I'll swap it. Good morning, everyone. Actually, good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, thank you to everybody for joining this um, webinar from the Florida Apex Accelerator at FIU. Uh, my name is Brian Van Hook. I'm the Regional Director of the Small Business Development Center here at FIU. I'm here with my colleague, Luis Batista from Apex. Um, we will give it like a couple of minutes, um, like two minutes for you guys to stream in. But we would ask maybe put in the chat like who you are, what's your business, because um, we would like to know who you are in this. And um, we'll give it like another minute or two, and then um, we'll get started because we know that you guys want to learn about how to successfully um, compete for federal contracts. And if you are, you're in the right place. And for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, Apex Accelerators, we were formerly the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Uh, so basically, we have a new name, pretty much the same mandate. And there are uh, 12 of us in the state of Florida. I pretty much take care of Miami-Dade County and uh, Monroe, the Keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're not in Miami-Dade County or the Keys, uh, we have other great um, P uh, Apex Accelerator consultants that are around the state. Let's see. Let's see. Let me load up the presentation, guys. Okay. So Leo, is that good? Yes. Well, we see, yeah, we see the PowerPoint now. Okay. If you want to press play in the top, like better. Okay. Better. Cool. So we'll get started, guys. Um, so as um, you guys are old friends with Lewis and I now, you know that I'm the regional director of the Small Business Development Center. Lewis is the um, government procurement uh, consultant for the Apex Accelerator. Um, we're very proud to be here today. This is our first official webinar or training under the Florida Apex Accelerator. Um, and so we're just really proud to have you here today. We're gonna talk to you about um, finding and winning federal contracts. We also will save some time at the end for questions and answers. So we would ask if you do have a question um, for Lewis or myself or something you want to mention, um, please put it in the Q&A section. Um, I think uh, Leo will be sharing in the chat some links that we're going to talk about um, and some additional information. So we would ask if you have any questions, um, please put it in the Q&A and we can make sure we'll get to that. Um, just real quick, Lewis already inter introduced himself. I'm on the re I am the regional director of SBDC at FIU. Um, I have time served, as I like to say, in DC, Washington, DC. I've also been here in Miami um, as part of the SBDC at FIU um, for 10 years. So I have experience kind of working in the federal government, working in the Congress, um, working in a number of different roles. So I'm happy to share that expertise of working um, inside the federal government on how you can access some of these uh, business opportunities for your business. Um, and that's just a, a picture shows my uh, screen time that I was a star on C-SPAN for anybody that still watches C-SPAN. Um, so I can show my kids uh, that your dad your dad was cool. He was on C-SPAN. Cool or not cool. Um, and then, Lewis, anything you want to do on your introduction? Uh, just to let you know that we work with all businesses, whether you're just starting in the government mm -hmm. uh, contracting area or, or have a, a bit of experience in it or a lot of experience in it. Uh, I just mentioned there are 12 of us in the state of Florida. All of us uh, have different uh, expertise, per se. Anyone who says they know everything about government contracting is probably exaggerating just a bit. Uh, but we try to get you the answers you need. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then um, a lot of you guys are familiar with the Peak TAC program, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center program. Um, as Lewis mentioned at the start, the program late last year and this year is transitioning to now the Apex Accelerator. Um, new name, 
similar program. Um, it's actually now under the Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs, um, and it's focused on helping the DOD supply chain and government contracts. Um, the program is also um, shifting a little bit to also focus on government innovation programs, uh, cybersecurity, and technology. So um, from the, a, the Florida Apex Accelerator, um, that's our statewide network. Um, we are the local Apex Accelerator for, as Lewis mentioned, Miami-Dade County and the Florida Keys. Um, and if you're not in those particular counties, we have other colleagues that we can refer you to, um, definitely to get you some great assistance. And um, like Lewis said, we can work with smaller, large businesses that are seeking um, government contracts, Department of Defense, federal government, state and local agencies, um, prime contractors, also some of those other services with, um, related to cybersecurity, government-led innovation. And um, we do trainings like this um, to help the community and connect with you guys and give you resources. So Lewis, anything else on APEX? It makes you a lot more concentration on the uh, research and development side mm -hmm. uh, coming from you know APEX outreach and on the cybersecurity side, but um, we're still very much focusing on every aspect of government contracting, not just research mm -hmm. and development and cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of your uh, entries in chat, the different areas that you're in. Many of those areas, if not all that I've seen just so far, would have a lot of opportunities in, uh, in government contracting. Um, and one other thing, really, a lot of companies, for one reason or other, when they reach out to Apex, well, maybe because our, our name is is, is, is is splattered all over, you know, the system for word management, but they're always just or primarily looking at federal government contracts. And while that's always a possibility of not dealing directly with them, you know, with a prime contractor, uh, there are, Miami-Dade County is the sixth or seventh largest county by population in the country. So there's a lot of work here, a lot of companies that would like to work here uh, through teaming, joint ventures, mentor project, a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we'll get into that. I know we have a couple of slides on that, Lewis, so you can definitely kind of hit hit the um, hit those topics. And then I did want to mention under the SBDC side, we're part of the Florida SBDC network. There's nine really great centers in the state of Florida. So um, as we mentioned under APEX, where we cover Miami-Dade County and the Florida Keys, um, specific to our program from the, when the center launched in 2014 to the end of 2022, um, we've assisted about almost 5,000 businesses um, specific to this particular topic. We've assisted businesses in securing 22.1 million in government contracts. Um, also, we really focus heavily on access to capital because if you get these contracts, you're going to need working capital and funds and things like that. So we um, focus on that. Um, that was just for Miami-Dade County. We also have additional impacts and outcomes in the key, in the keys. So. Um, I know that we've done this um, presentation in Key West a couple of times too. So um, we're definitely really um, here to be a resource for you and help you out. And then I always like to emphasize the team. I don't want to give you just numbers on a page. Um, you'll see Lewis up in the upper left uh, corner, um, but we have a really great team. Overall, we have 26 business um, specialists that are here to help you in a variety of different areas. Um, we work very collaboratively as a team and can kind of help you start and grow your business. Um, this is also our team that's under the BizGap program that's focused on um, Miami-Dade County and also um, the Congressional District, um, Florida's 27th Congressional District. And this is our team in the Keys. And then um, before I get into the presentation, I just want to say um, we're also very proud that we were the National SBA Small Business uh, Development Center of the Year. Um, so we're really proud um, that we're kind of like the outgoing SBDC of the Year. Um, we kind of retain that title in perpetuity for 2023, but um, as of May um, 2024, we'll have a new SBDC. So just shout out to our team for working really hard and um, being recognized not just in locally or in the state, but um, out of 1,100 SBDCs, we're the number one center for 2023. So it's a great honor and like shout out to Lewis because we, you know, we're all one team, whether we're Apex or SBDC, we're one team. Um, and then I want to get into the presentation on it. Um, we're big believers in working smarter, not harder. So the one thing we do emphasize is um, Lewis will recognize this was this was under PTAC, but like the six step gateway um, is focused on kind of giving you some actionable steps 
to really um, get into government contracting and then really succeed under government contracting. So we did kind of break this presentation into like those six buckets and um, kind of give you some individual steps under each of them. So, um, and I would say for this, we will send you a copy of the presentation after, um, you know, we finish the webinar. So um, you can take a screenshot or you can kind of snap a photo on from your phone, but we also will give you um, the, uh, the presentation as a PDF afterwards, if you want to look at it on your own time. And we also will upload this particular webinar up to our YouTube page as well. So you can kind of watch it on your own time. But the six step gateways talked about evaluating government contracting and if it's the right path for your business at this time, uh, making a good plan, registering the businesses with the relevant registrations, preparing, um, pursuing the, um, different government uh, opportunities that are like actionable for your business, and then achieving, basically building on those contracts that you have, gaining additional contracts, getting additional contacts with the federal government. So we'll get into evaluation. And I think um, for Lewis and for our team, this is kind of some of the fact finding or the information um, that we do a lot with a lot of businesses that are not currently in government contracting um, is kind of helping you to figure out if it's the right um, opportunity for your business. Like the slide says, it's basically expensive and there's a lot of competition depending on your product or service. So we really want to kind of give you some questions that you can ask yourself before you dive into government contracting. So a lot of the key questions is um, like, what size contract can you handle? How many uh, proposals can you really like move forward? Um, how much growth are you going to be willing to go through and can you handle? An example is like, if you're really comfortable having like a two person shop, but under this contract, you're going to have to hire five more people. You know, can you handle that from an HR perspective, from a finance perspective, from a management perspective? Um, is it worth kind of you getting that contract and having to hire those additional people? You might have additional recording, uh, reporting requirements and things like that. Um, and also for your business, if you're selling to the government, you know, how many more products or services can you create and deliver? Because you don't want to oversell and under deliver, um, especially with the federal government, because it could be one and done. If you get one contract and you don't do a great job, that's going to impact you if you're going for other contracts. Um, Lewis, anything on these particular questions? Just, just a couple of things that uh, many get confused, and I'll just touch on a couple of, of, of sectors. Construction, for example, everybody thinks construction, even commercial or industrial construction, they think they're building buildings everywhere, every, every other day. Uh -huh. No, construction is a lot of uh, just build out, repairs, maintenance, a lot of stuff falls under construction. And in construction, for example, the prime contractor only needs to self-perform, I mean, do themselves, 15, 1-5% of the work. What does that mean? It gives them a great deal of flexibility. You could imagine having to do almost any other sector, you have to self-perform 51%. So construction, mm -hmm. there's a, a, a big misunderstanding there. And, and logistics is the other extreme. Logistics, and I saw a few of you uh, on here in, in logistics, and that's my personal expertise, supply chain management, uh, well beyond government contracting. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, believe that just doing the ground transportation or whether it's, you know, you're an MVOCC and you're doing sea, land, air, rail, whatever it is. Yeah, there's work to do that, but really the work in logistics is more uh, 3PL, even 4PL type work where you're managing the, the process from A to Z. And there's a lot of opportunities there Again, working for prime contractors that have those huge uh, those huge contracts, and they need to move the product from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of misconceptions in, in what areas are are best to enter in federal government contracting, and you know we can help you with that. Yeah, and then some of the additional questions, kind of Lewis touched on them, is like, what if you win the contract? Are you like, yay? Or are you like, oh my god, I got this contract. What am I gonna do? Um, so you need to kind of think through um kind of that opportunity also if you lose the contract is it going to completely screw up your company so are you are you basically gambling everything for this contract that you know like we said it's very competitive um so you need to basically like game it out um you always need to be able to uh walk away even like right before the proposal date is due um it's like that kenny rogers song you know you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them and when to walk away um so it's like if you're not ready 
to walk away if it's not kind of the right opportunity, then it could impact your business. Um, and then also, I know a lot of the stuff that Lewis and the consultants talk with the clients about is like, you know, how is this contract not just like you getting the contract, but how is it building your business? Like, how is it part of your long term game plan? And and you got to know when to run. That's the end of that uh -huh. line. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. uh, and I didn't really touch so much on the really help you try and get contracts. Whether or not you can handle it, you know, that's kind of the stuff that you would reach out to the SBDC for. They have access to capital consultants that can help you work through your books. Can you afford this contract? Are you credit worthy? Those kind of uh, uh, points. Apex is just going to try and help you get contracts, just to be clear. Okay. That's going to be our mandate. Uh, everything else, of course, will help you with prospecting as much as we can. But that's really the the add-on mostly. It's a lot of uh, a lot of reporting, a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then kind of like the last couple of questions is Lewis kind of hit on that earlier about like focusing on your niche or your target market. Um, you can really drill down on kind of your particular niche by looking at your past performance. I know that's something that is like a keyword um, for a lot of the contracting officers is basically what have you done in the past? What have you done related to like this particular opportunity, um, your individual past experience or that as part of your team? Um, Lewis did touch on like uh joint ventures like teaming, subcontracting, that's where you can either pick up experience or you can join with other companies that may have experience or performance that you might not have to kind of build like the perfect um, you know, team. Also focusing on your geographical focus area, like you're in Miami, do you really want an opportunity that's in New Mexico or in Washington state? Are you gonna be able to do it um, versus doing something that's here local? Um, in terms of like your socioeconomic status, that's important for like the different certifications from the federal government, um, small business size standards. And then sometimes maybe you know somebody, maybe you know somebody that's not in the federal government, but maybe they can get you um, to like a, a vendor outreach fair, or get you connected to somebody that can kind of get you in um, the circles you need to be in. But, um, you know, in terms of the presentation, we always talk about don't don't think about those contracts about what they're going to get you. Think about what's going to cost you in your business, because that way you're basically gaming out like how that's going to move you towards something and growing your business. Anything else on the evaluation or the kind of the niche, Lewis? No, just don't bite off more than you could chew. That's mm -hmm. my general my general advice to uh, on on that on that, on that subject. Uh, you know, past performance is always uh, important. Um, every single solicitation is different. A lot will just be price centric, very easy to respond to. A lot will really require you outline each, uh, each, um, each individual that will participate in it, you know, entire experience, not only in general, but possibly with that agency. And again, those are the kind of things that we can help you, uh, iron out as, as you process these, these, um, these submissions. Cool. And then we covered, so there are six steps. So I'm going to keep on, on point on that. There's six steps. Basically, we covered number one, which is evaluate. Now we're going to talk about like good, putting together a really good plan. So um, again, basically, we talked about like the six-step gateway, just kind of like re reminding. So now we're on planning. So um, Lewis and I are not here to tell you that you're not going to get a $20 million NASA contract or DOD contract right out the bat. Um, you can do it. It has been done. Uh, we just finished a community navigator project and actually our first client under community navigator and Louis, um, you know, Mirtha really well. Mirtha's first client, uh, he was able to get multiple de uh, Department of Defense, the Defense Logistics Agency contracts. They were smaller contracts in the um, range of like 10,000, 15,000, something like that. But that's past performance. That's getting your foot in the door. And, um, you know, he was able to basically start his business in November and get um, DOD contracts in March. So it can be done, but we do like to manage expectations. And Lewis said, don't bite off more than you can chew. Most small businesses, they start with small contracts or even as a subcontractor to a prime, they start local. Like Lewis said, you know, you, in Miami-Dade County, there's so many municipalities here, or even just working with the county or the school board, you could be a very successful business just working with them or working with like 67, you know, counties or so in Florida. Or municipalities, you can start local. Um, you want to build up that past performance, take advantage of any of those opportunities to team or to do subcontracting so you can get that experience, grow up your capacity. When we talk about capacity, 
That's your financial capacity, your access to capital, your working capital, building up your HR, and also building up your operations so that you can handle larger contracts and then work your way up where you can kind of go after those federal contracts. So anything anything on that, Lewis, or anything I'm missing? No, I've got a, a question here that if you don't mind, I'll answer live only because it's kind mm -hmm. of difficult to explain. I think others will really benefit from it. Um, and it has to do with your entries, right? A lot of companies want to start working with uh, DOD's DLA, the Defense Logistic Agency. And that all goes through a system called DIBS. Mm -hmm. they, they post these opportunities in SAM as well. But in order to get on DIBS, you have to register in it. They send you a postcard. It takes two weeks to do that. And then everything there is by national stock number. And there are a few classifications where it's open to the entire market, but most you have to be a pre-qualified uh, vendor. You have to be an approved source. And if you're not an approved source, you have to either buy it from the approved source or become an approved source yourself through a source approval request. That's a, a very long, complicated uh, uh, process. And there's a lot of history that needs to be reviewed there, how much... Uh, does the product cost? What can you get it for? How often has it been bought? Uh, but we we can look into that. Just a lot to it. Much more that I can answer and pay attention at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we would encourage you, um, we have your contact information. So put your um, questions in the Q&A like um, they did. But also feel free to circle back. You have Le uh, Leo's contact information. Um, I know we'll also put the re uh, registration link to register. Um, so you can register for assistance, um, like during the webinar, we, Lewis and I want you to pay attention to us. So wait until at the end of the webinar, but um, you can definitely <laughs> register to meet with Lewis. Um, we also were going to mention at the end, we also do have additional consultants for government contracting on the, on the SBDC side of the house. Um, so we have additional consultants um, that can help you, whether that's Lewis or the rest of the team. Um, in terms of planning, um, everybody knows Uncle Sam. You know, with the ha top hat and the goatee um, and the kind of like the flag colors. So the system for award management, um, SAM is kind of like a big point of contact, a big uh, portal to register. And that's where you get like your unique entity ID. Um, you apply, then you get all these other information, but you can also look on SAM.gov for different opportunities and things like that. Um, so, Louis, did you want to talk about SAM.gov? Only that they keep adding functionality to it. Um... It has opportunities now. It, uh, you have to sign in to actually see other vendors' uh, information. Uh, it has wage determination. And they continue to include systems in it. When they finish, it's like 10 different systems. FPDS will be brought over. So a lot of changes. They, they make changes to it. I don't know if you've noticed, but even the last month, they made changes to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and then I do know um, I work on the disaster side and the business recovery side. And so a lot of businesses will see like a hurricane or like an earthquake or like a wildfire. And then they're trying to register for opportunities. You can get contracting opportunities, um, you know, when a disaster happens or after it happens. But most of the time they're using, like Lewis said, for dibs, they're using like pre-qualified or pre-registered um, vendors or businesses. And so actually I know in the old um, system, you used to be able to like indicate you want to be on those disaster lists for like FEMA, DHS, things like that. Um, but that is really why, not just for these contracting opportunities with the federal government, but also opportunities like that. You want to get in and get your information in the system and actually do it before a disaster. So you can kind of be on the list or be under consideration. Um, and then one of the things we always mention is um, basically just because you get your SAM reg registration or your CAGE code, that doesn't mean you're registered as a vendor for like the federal government, for the counties, for the cities. Um, you know, your SAM registration is free, so there's no charges for you to do it. Um, and if people are charged, trying to charge you, um, they're not the government. So a lot of people pay for those SAM registrations and assistance and things like that. You can pay them if you want to, but those mo for most businesses, those are things that they can do on their own. Or they could take advantage of APEX resources or SBDC resources um, to get registered. And then um, I do just want to mention from the federal government perspective, um, there's multiple programs um, that focus on helping businesses get at least 23% of all federal contracts. Well, we talk about that a lot in these type of presentations, but I actually want to drill down and show you kind of how the government breaks it down. 
that basically they do break down, you know, 5% women owned small businesses, 12% small disadvantaged business, um, 3% service disabled, um, 3% hub zone. Um, so they do break down those particular per percentages into particular programs. Um, and each agency kind of has a scorecard um, that they do um, get scored on, just like your your kids, you or your kids would in school on how they're doing or not doing um, in terms of like contracting with local businesses in those particular categories. Um, so I did want to give you kind of like the pick list from these small business certifications. And Lewis, um, I did include on there not just giving them the particular names of them, but also like where they can go on those. So like, for example, small and disadvantaged business that they can self-certify on SAM, women-owned small business. Um, you can go to the women-owned small business website um, for the economically disadvantaged. That's also on the women-owned small business website. For veteran-owned, um, it does have a couple of additional steps, but there is a dedicated website for that. Um, for service-disabled veteran, um, you can self-certify. Um, for hub zone, there is a particular hub zone um, website because um, that's based on census tracts. Um, but that one, you do have to go to that particular portal. And then the 8A um, business development program, um, you do need to apply for that on the SBA certified website. So I did include the link up there. If you do want to go check on your eligibility, they used to have like a quick tool that you could just put in facts about your business and then it would kind of spit out that you may be eligible. Um, as of the last time I checked it, they took that off. Um, but the website is still up there that you can go and check particular um, certifications. But just be aware there are a couple of certifications. Some of them are time limited. Um, some of them do have a couple of extra steps. So you do want to factor that in. There is one change to the SDVOSB program. I have mm -hmm. to look into exactly when it takes effect. But they're changing the re, from 3% to 5%. Okay. <clears throat> now, it's also fair noting that if you look at the, the, the federal spend over the last three years, they're already at 4.57%, but still it's an increase and we should see, you know, something there. Yeah, that's good. That's good info. Um, and then when you're looking for, like this is called targeting, when you're basically targeting opportunities, you want to start looking by your industry. Um, and you need to remember when you're looking at your particular industry that you might um, fall into particular industry codes or NACE codes, NAICS, -A 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 -I NACE codes. Um, and that's North American Industry Commodity Service Code. Um, but you can have a business that does multiple things. You could be like a janitorial supply and you could have multiple codes that you fall under. Similarly, if you do construction, you could basically fall under a particular construction um, thing. So you want to keep that in mind. But as Lewis said previously, don't try to be like jack of all trades, master of none. You really want to target on those things that you can be like be able to deliver on and be, have like an expertise on. Um, and you want to also focus on any unique advantages that you have. Um, we're going to talk about like small. We already talked about some of the small business set asides um, or any certifications you can go for. Um, you can focus on your geographic area, like where you live or where your business is located, or maybe another part of the country that you have particular expertise for. Like we have a um, client that's really has been really successful in South Florida, but they also have like um, locations in Houston, Texas, and they're expanding to like another location. So they actually have a couple um, locations that they've actually branched out because they're working on like local contracts and federal contracts. And then we'll go back to like that past experience, past performance. Um, and then one of the things I always do talk about just because I did work on the government side was about those forecasts, about their past awards um, to get smart on like what agencies spend or how they're projected to spend. And you wanna really dr drill down on some of the timing. Like what do they buy? How do they buy it? Like what amounts do they buy? What set asides apply? Are they hitting those small business goals? So you really know who to target for opportunities. A really good example is like one of Lewis's clients um, from pre-COVID, she was going to apply for the 8A certification. 8A is a lot of it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of stuff you have to apply for. And so she was going to apply. It also is um, time limited. Like you have basically eight years to be in the program. Lewis looked at the particular agency she was going for, which was USAID, 
and saw that they were actually looking for opportunities for the economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business. So he was able to help her. That was something that she could self-certify on. She was able to go after a contract and she got a $2 million USAID contract. And she was able to do it with less paperwork, less effort, and basically ultimately get the contract. But that's an example where you might want to look at those certifications and how they're buying, because you could really identify agencies where um, you could really target and get some good opportunities. So I wanted to give you a shout out on that, Lewis. I drive past that business like at least once a week. So I'm like, I remember that business, Lewis, help them out. Thank you. And then, um, and then one of the things you can look up for um, government uh, spending in general or contracting um, opportunities, USA spending, um, you can search for any of the federal um, contracts or awards under each and every one of your NACE codes. Um, you wanna know the award listings and the agencies as those are your potential um, contracting um, agencies to, to target. And um, there's additional websites you can look at too. I just gave you USA Spending. You can also go to fedspending.org. SAM.gov has a great website um, for searching. Um, Acquisition.gov has one. And then I did include BidMatch um, up here, Lewis. I don't know, do we still have access to BidMatch or do you guys use that a lot? Because I know that was like kind of referenced mm -hmm. a lot. We do, uh, Apex Florida, we buy about a thousand subscriptions a year. It mm -hmm. doesn't have any customer facing portal so what I do for my clients is I have to go into BidMatch by Neil Sira and just basically enter your information, your NICS codes, your keywords, your PSC codes, and then you'll get a daily email starting about three or four days later with all of those opportunities. I don't really use BidMatch, although you can for federal opportunities. I really suggest you configure SAM for that, mm -hmm. but for local opportunities, it captures hundreds of different cities and counties and that's something I did want to mention. Don't forget, Miami, they count me alone, 35 cities. Florida has 65 counties. Yep. There's a lot of work here. Yeah. And that's a good way to build up that past performance, build up that past performance based on the resume for your business. And one other website that I do want to mention is fpds.gov. Uh, and that's a good website because if you lose an opportunity or you lose a bid, you have three days to request a, uh, a post award conference with a contracting officer. A lot of times mm -hmm. you're not gonna get much information. If it's price centric, you pretty much know why, but you could actually go to fpds.gov under view, look up that solicitation and under view, see how many respondents there were to, uh, to that opportunity. It just starts giving you a, a bigger and bigger picture of what's going on. Yeah, and you want to improve. Like a lot of businesses don't take advantage of that, but you want to get better and you want to like refine your proposals. So it is something to take advantage of. Um, I what when I worked in DC, I did work with a lot of businesses that were seeking like federal grants or federal like opportunities, and they wouldn't get those readouts from the agency. Like what was it? Sometimes you know, someone somebody was an incumbent and they had experience. Um, sometimes people basically had um, like Lewis said, price or something else. But a lot of times those are things that you can improve on for the next one. And when you're looking, you want to look for key agencies. You want to look for like procurement contacts. We're going to get into like some of the contacts to look for. Um, any like upcoming RFP workshops or like if they're doing vendor outreach. Now that we're past COVID, you know, everybody's, they're trying to get out more. Um, I would mention we are seeing a lot more folks wanting to come to Miami. I wonder why Miami's, you know, good spot. Um, so like, at, la actually last year we did partner with the office of small business programs at the Navy, um, to be able to do a small business workshop with them. And, um, was just a really great opportunity that we did in Westchester, like Lewis was there. Um, so they are getting out more and trying to do more outreach events. Um, in terms of targeting, um, I'm going to mention to you that there's basically four procurement layers. So we're going to talk about some of these different ones from the OSDEBU, from contracting officers, from program managers, um, and then also uh, mention about the SBA's um, Procurement Center Representative, PCRs. So the OSDEBU, of course, it's the federal government, so it has to be an acronym, but that stands for Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. Um, at the agencies, I do want to mention, some are called OSDEBUs, some are just called Small Business Programs. So it does the terminology does differ by agency, but in general, if you're looking on like the federal agency website, you would look for like an OSDEBU or a small business office. And that's going to be like the point of contact. Um, basically, they are like the small business office. 
Um, they basically ensure that the agencies follow small business contracting rules and regulations. Um, be aware they don't buy things themselves, but they can be like a foot in the door, like your first stop to get into an agency. Whenever you do meet with an Ozdabu, you want to be prepared just like anything in life. You want to show up. You want to be, you know, you're contacting them, do your research on the agency. You want to have three of those sources sought, like those particular things that they have out on the street. Uh, make sure that you completed your SAM registration, like Lewis said, and then also have like any kind of other information, like your financial plan, um, any kind of, like past performance that you have. You want to be prepared to like make your first, um, your best impression. Um, I, and I was going to mention on Ozdaboos. Ozdaboos, just like any organization, there's some really great Ozdaboos and small business officers. Some other ones, there's not as good. So I know when I worked in D.C., I would always hear that HHS had a really bad Ozdabu, that they weren't helpful, they weren't getting referred to other people. So anytime basically somebody would be going to HHS, I'd be like, God bless you, um, you know, on it. But I would hear like, an, you know, at, at other agencies, they had really great small business people that were proactive, had a lot of information, you know, were focused on customer service. So just know that, they're like we said, they're not buyers but also depends on the person, depends on the agency. So just be ready, have all your information and um, just be ready to like um, try to work with them. In terms of other contacts, um, contracting officers, um, or they're also listed as KOs. Um, these are the folks that make the buying decisions. Um, they're very important contacts, but they're very busy. They have huge workloads. They're not gonna just be sitting around waiting for your email and like respond to you within two minutes. Um, they basically are established in the FAR. So they follow the FAR like by the letter of the law. Um, and when you're reaching out to those contracting officers, you want to look at the different contracting methods, like the different vehicles that they use for procurement. Um, as I mentioned, like what amounts do they purchase in? How do they purchase? Look at the timing. Um, for a lot of the agencies, um, they don't get their budgets until late. Like look at right now, the Congress still hasn't passed the federal government's um, budget for this fiscal year. They're going to pass it probably like in March or April, and they have until September to spend the money. It's use it or lose it. They got to spend the money. They don't get to keep it. So a lot of the important buying decisions in a normal year, but even more so like in a year like this, they're going to be done in like July, in August, September. You know, I'm from Louisiana. You know, in South Louisiana and New Orleans, you have like the Mardi Gras parades. It literally is like the Mardi Gras parade at the end of the year where they dump all the beads off the float. <laughs> so you want to be prepared. Have your SAM registration have all your IRS stuff up to date, um, just be ready to take advantage of any opportunities because they do need to spend the funding later in the year. And it does help you when you know when do they spend things, how do they spend it, how do they buy. Um, Lewis, anything on contracting officers? Yes, it, it does matter what industry you're in. If, if you build, right, you're in the business of building single family homes or, you know, something like that, the contracting officer can't whip out, you know, uh, uh, an offer for you. Right, that that's going to be in sand. But if, mm -hmm. for example, you uh, you build out uh, uh, MRI rooms, or you do something very specialized, whatever it is, something specialized, and you see a need for it immediately, that will be the time to contact the contracting officer about that. Otherwise, it's really more about just getting their assistance with responding to a solicitation. These solicitations will have, you know, response. Uh, uh, dates that they have to respond to, but they have to do it via an addenda because everybody needs to get that answer. Uh, so there's a time to call a contract officer and a time not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you mean the cone of silence too, right? Like where they're, where they're too, that, like that, prohibited. That, yeah, that, that too. When in, in, in Mammy Day County, uh, for example, uh, there's a cone of silence for a solicitation once it, you know, it goes out. Nobody can even talk about it until it's closed. And that's because of all the, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then for the contracting officers, um, you can ask an Ozdabu or a small business um, office for an email introduction or referral. Um, you could also ask the contracting officer for a capability briefing. Um, and you could basically on your end, you could schedule monthly monthly marketing outreach to them just to check in. Um, especially if there's opportunities that come out. I also am going to give you like a little bit later on, like ways to like find those contracting officers or the point of contact for, for tip, uh, particular contracts so that you can basically be proactive and maybe something that won't come out for bid for like six months or a year. 
you can actually get a leg up and basically be able to like find them ahead of time because you would maybe be able to talk to them more if it's not out on the street versus if something's like already been posted. Um, and then in terms of like program managers, those are program staff in an agency. Like when I worked at Department of Commerce, I would be like a um, program staff. You're like a user. You're basically somebody that has knowledge of the agency, you know, knows how, the, um, what the problem is, how they can solve it. You can offer value to the solution that you're, you as a business is offering that agency. Um, they're basically sources of information. They're resources for you to understand how things work in an agency. Um, and they're valuable, like how you can understand and tailor your solution to benefit them. These are people that a lot of times you'll meet them at some of these vendor outreach fairs, you know, vendor outreach events. Um, you can meet them at like industry association things, um, different conferences. That's usually where you can connect with these people. That's why it's always important to have your cards on you and basically get a card from them. And you can see on the card, oh, wait, 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 you work at this agency. I want to talk to you. And, you know, you could talk to them about kind of just how the agency works and kind of get that inside knowledge that you might not know from you being on the outside. But kind of like we said for the Ozdabu, um, they're not a buyer, but they are a way for you to get additional information or connections or contacts. And then the last one we want to mention on those procurement layers is the procurement center representative, a PCR. Um, PCR are, PCRs are very important parts of the federal government process. They review acquisitions, they view, uh, review bundling cases, solicitations, um, they do recommend set-asides, they help with market research, um, they do like surveillance reviews. Um, Florida currently has one PCR that's based in the state, and then they have two that are outside of Florida but cover like Florida um, installations or Florida agencies as well. And PCRs are points of contact. They are divided up based on particular agencies and particular regions and things. Um, but they are like um, good points of contact um, for particular agencies. And Lewis, any experience with PCRs or any like feedback on those? Well, P PCRs and Ostaboos, right? Mm -hmm. Their main function, their, their, their principal function is to, as, as is the SBAs, to, to have the federal government give more and more business to small business. So they're not going to take you by the hand on, you know, specific solicitations per se. What they're going to do is give you more of an overall picture of the agency that, that, that you're working with. Because each agency has an ostable of their own. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a really good website that listed all the Ozdaboos and small business offices. Um, it was taken down. So I was like, oh, man, I can show you guys a screenshot from that. But there, you can go to each agency you're looking at. And they do have a small business office or like, you know, working with us or contracting with us. Um, so I did want to just mention you guys, I referenced it um, previously, is um, each agency is kind of scored on how they're doing with their small business goals. Um, the website that I listed, I think Leo was going to put in the chat, but that does, um, you can look it up. It's posted every year and it basically shows how they're doing on their small business goals. And so like Lewis had done previously with clients is basically targeting some of those agencies that maybe do a lot of business with your particular certification um, or basically that are really doing badly that maybe need more businesses. An example is like in Key West, um, Key West um, Naval Air Station, they were having trouble finding 8A firms. So we were able to basically work with them to identify 8A firms that were a SBA client, SBDC clients, SBA um, you know, folks, and basically get them connected to those local 8A firms. Um, but every agency has kind of like their particular areas that they're like doing well in or struggling in. So you can really do a lot of research and find out like um, as part of your targeting, which agencies you want to work with. And then this just shows you like the scorecards basically, um, you know, for their particular um, performance. Basically, they get just like in school, get an A plus, a B. I think the lowest I saw was a C. I don't think anybody got a D um, on it, but um, they're basically kind of scored every year on it. And I did put up there where the agency scorecards are. So you can see like what the latest one is. I just took a snapshot from a couple of agencies. And then you can also really drill down on some of the data, like some of the information, like in terms of uh, different charts and graphs and things like that, like how they're doing. So one of the things I did want to do is, um, and this is something Lewis is going to be super um, helpful on, is kind of give you a couple different strategies and also some keywords to look up. So obviously the place that most people go is sam.gov to look up opportunities. So um, I did type in um, for um, a particular industry, I did look up like light bulbs 
And so you go to the SAM.gov website, basically you search for contract opportunities and you're able to basically research like particular um, agencies or particular opportunities. And when you search it up, basically this is kind of what comes up. You This type of information, it basically lists like the um, agency, like kind of like the unit of the agency, like what office, they have information such as like, what's the date, when are, what's the deadline, um, you know, when was it published? You can kind of click on it and get more information. But that's kind of the information that you would see on SAM.gov. And I would mention, again, these are ones that are like on the street, so they're open to everybody. So everybody has the same chance to apply based on their particular qualifications and things like that. And I think that's the most popular way for people to research, right, Louis? It is. And the, and the good thing and bad thing about this resource is there's a lot of filters there. Uh -huh. You can filter by uh, the keyword, uh, dates that the station is due, mix codes, product service codes, product supply codes. Uh, so you can really, really dig, dig down. And many of these, you don't see it too much anymore. But once you, you dig in to one of these, you'll see uh, many times an interested vendors section where mm -hmm. you as a subcontractor, for example, or if you're interested in, in that opportunity, but maybe won't be bidding on it directly uh, or will be, but need other people to work with, you can list yourself there. And you also want to, and there's videos uh, that uh, SAM.gov uh, makes available for you to, to program SAM. So uh -huh. you can program as many different instances as you want to actually relay these opportunities to you on a daily, weekly basis. Uh -huh. That's where technology is helping out, where the government's trying to get smarter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's basically looking on SAM.gov and looking for particular opportunities. Um, as Lewis said, you really do want to like target. You do really do want to lean in on your uh, qualifications or your experience um, to really narrow down those opportunities. A second thing you can look for is something called an advanced acquisition plan, AAP. Um, advanced acquisition plan is basically like the agency putting out something to say we were we are going to buy these things, um, come like in the future these are coming up. Um, everybody thinks about Homeland Security has like billions and billions of dollars. So I did um, did want to start with like the big dog um, next to DoD. So this is on the the DHS website where you just go to you can see like the kind of the uh, workflow. I went to basically the homepage, was able to look at like doing business with DHS. And then it lists all this stuff and it says business opportunities. Um, you can look on here and then it, on the side, you see where it says advanced acquisition planning, where they have like a forecast of contract opportunities. Um, and these are things that it does include like previous opportunities, previous um, contracts they put out, but it also includes stuff in the future as well. And um, I really like this because this is a way for you to um, find particular contacts, like contracting officers, like narrow down on particular contracts. You can narrow down stuff that's going to come out like in six months or a year, and you can actually kind of work on getting some of the things in place to be able to go after that opportunity. So it is a good way to get kind of good contact information, contacts, information on you can look at who currently has the contracts. So you can kind of see, are they, is it up for bid, you know, those type of things, and you can research the company. When you click on kind of the advanced acquisition uh, plan, it takes you to this website. You can see where they can, you can, like Lewis said, you can uh, subscribe to email notifications, like interested vendors. Um, you can look up like their uh, acquisition forecast records. You can look up a lot of really good opportunities. I also like the website. I didn't, hadn't seen it previously where they do also put in information on subcontracting. So you can actually get in and look on subcontracting opportunities. Maybe if you don't have experience on your own, but you want to gain that experience. So I do like that um, particular one. And when you get into the advanced acquisition plan, this is the kind of data that you can see, and it is sortable. So you can sort it by the NACE code, you can sort it by the contract status, by the um, place of performance. Um, I did just sort it by like um, kind of Florida particular ones. You can sort it by like the dollar range, you know, when they're gonna put it out. So you can see some of these, like they've already been put out, like one was put out on January 15th, one was put out in, will be put out expected in, you know, um, October. So you do see, um, you do see basically when it can put it out and then when they're going to put the forecast out, like when they can put that kind of stuff. So Lewis, anything on um, advanced acquisition plans? 
if you look back at a couple of pages, a couple of slides, uh -huh. all of those contacts are just for there, are just for DHS. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a lot of contacts. These these people who want to work with companies with past performance and all that good stuff, but they also want to work with people. So this very much becomes a, a networking exercise. Mm -hmm. Once you're registered, once you have your certifications that you need, once you've done your analytics, right? Once you have your marketing material, it becomes a function that you would do in the commercial sector. And that is letting yourself be known and then doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this is just basically if you click on one of those um, opportunities that's in the advanced acquisition plan, this shows you the type of information that's in there where it shows like, for example, who's the incumbent? It's C-Wire and Cable Incorporated. It's going to be a recompete. They listed it's good, the contract vehicles and IDIQ. Um, they talk about like more information on the description, kind of what's the estimated dollar range. Most importantly, they list who's the point of contact. So they list basically it's Ishmael Melendez. There's the email address. There's the phone number. They also have like um, an alternate contact as well. So you can reach out to them. And this isn't on the street. This isn't posted. So that you might be able to connect with them and to, you know get some information or at least get on the radar. So I, I do like this for getting the contact information and helping you to narrow down like particular um, opportunities. Um, the third strategy I'd kind of put out is agency forecasts. Um, that's something that you can basically look up. It is similar to advanced acquisition plan. Um, it's just different terminology. So basically um, I just typed in Google, um, the Google, I typed in like federal agency contract forecast and you'll see basically acquisition.gov was the first one that came up. Also, you do see GSA um, listed as well. I clicked on the GSA one. Um, and a lot of times for GSA, you can think about GSA as like the landlord for the federal government. You know, a lot of the federal buildings, they're in charge of that. They also do um, like different procurement and things like that. So GSA is like a good agency to work on. I know it is really tough to get on the GSA schedule though, Lewis, and get some of those opportunities. I know you've been really successful helping businesses, but um, for GSA, actually their website, they have a really good tool. So I did want to mention it to you. Um, they even have like a good um, video that's available. But for GSA, you can basically click on their agency forecast and the tool. It's uh, similar to what we looked at where you can basically look it up and you can see like, again, for batteries, um, they do have something for Department of Interior. It's in Spokane, Washington. It could be anywhere between 2.1 to $5 million. Um, they're basically doing planning. And um, the third one I was going to mention, kind of throwing in an additional one, was the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Uh, Millennium Challenge Corporation, a lot of people don't think about this, but it's kind of similar to USAID. And they do development projects overseas. So they do have like needs for procurement that are based in the US, but they also have procurement opportunities like overseas um, in particular companies. For the Millennium Challenge Corporation, they actually do have you see in the upper left-hand corner, doing business with Millennium Challenge Corporation, where you can actually search for doing business with them, um, doing business with them in their partner countries. Um, so you can search by like domestic or international and prominently on their website, right at the bottom, they list about business forecasts. So they do list the business forecast for there. The business forecast basically includes, you know, the same information. You can sort it by um, the submission date, by who's the point of contact, you can get their email address. And I have clicked on these email addresses before to make sure it like actually gives you an email address, um, but you can find that type of data and information. So I did want to throw it in. Um, so Lewis, anything on um, kind of like acquisition plans, anything on forecasts, anything on sam.gov before I move into the, the final stuff on business development? Unless you have six people working for you, right? You only have two hands or four hands. You can only do one thing at a time. Uh, I don't really suggest concentrating on just one agency. And not only do you don't want to be all things to all people, you don't want to be necessarily even one or two things to all agencies. They all work very differently. Department of Defense is famously more difficult to work with. Uh, other agencies, uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I see we have a number of questions, so I'm going to kind of get through the business development side. This is a lot of standard stuff that you would see in regular presentations, but just preparation, guys, focusing on preparing, um, you know, basically doing networking, outreach, um, making connections. 
Um, you basically, when you're doing business development, you can look for previously awarded contracts that are similar to what you're trying to do. Um, you want to um, take advantage of any proposal writing classes, cost estimating classes. I know that is a challenge, like Lewis said, a lot with prices. Um, or you, they have software programs that you could take advantage of too. Um, one of the things to help get organized is to develop like a matrix of contracts or RFPs. Like usually you can use Excel to track in the forecast um, contracts so that you can put that in. And you also understanding like the scoring committee, really reading a lot of those documents and understanding like what are they looking for to make sure that you're scoring high in the areas they're, they're looking for. Uh, maybe you don't focus on other aspects in the proposal you're putting in. Um, there's three things that you want to really focus on um, when you're trying to meet with somebody at a vendor outreach event, connecting with the contracting officer in Ozdebu is to have your capability statement, um, your elevator pitch, and also business cards. And so those are, those are three kind of things that you can do. We do have additional webinars that are posted on YouTube to really dive into capability statements and elevator pitches and things like that. So we do have some additional resources. Those are things that Apex consultants and also SBDC consultants can help you with. Um, but any kind of big tips on business development, Lewis? Anything anything you want to give them like that they can implement right now or kind of take home for tomorrow? As, a, as of late, for those of you that are already in SAM.gov or those of you that are going to register in SAM.gov, there's two other pillars. One is the SBA, DSBS profile where you get to say a bit about your company. Most of it gets brought in from SAM, your URL, your contact information, your POCs, but you get to add, uh, add a little bit about your company and some keywords uh, so this can look up and some performance history. But what's been added lately is also a link to your capability statement. Mm -hmm. um, some people are putting the link instead of their capability statement to their website, <laughs> for example, but the link to your website's already there. So that mm -hmm. that's duplicative. But uh, that, that's the latest on the uh, SBA side. And the capability statement is kind of a CV slash business card. Uh, when's the last time you looked at a business card, right, to get any information? Probably not that often. But mm -hmm. if people don't have it, it just doesn't look right. And it's a really good tool, especially when you go to these events, because those um, representatives from the different agencies, they will hold on to them, uh, where, you know, maybe other companies, not so much. Yeah, and you may definitely want to not just give them something at an event because they might be with like, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50 businesses. You also want to get their contact information and send a follow-up with whatever you discuss, you know, mm -hmm. point by point with your cap statement, um, any kind of opportunities. So you definitely want to follow up on okay. that. I know we have a, about nine or 10 questions. Um, so I will kind of um, give you the kind of some links. As I said, we will send you the um, presentation, but basically this is the Apex Accelerator website. We do have an overview of contracting with the federal government um, from the Florida PTAC that's available on YouTube. Um, we're also big believers if there's good information out there, the Northern California um, Apex Accelerator has like a really good um, presentation on how to prepare for federal spending sprees, like we said, where maybe they get their funding late or maybe they're like trying to wrap up the year. Um, so that is, and then I also am a big um, shout out to the Georgia Apex or Georgia PTAC um, they have a lot of great information on their website. And then um, while I'm going to leave this up, um, if you want to register for consulting under Apex, um, we are, are the Apex link, the sbdc.fiu.edu um, slash Apex. It will be active next week. Um, we are like finalizing the website um, with the information, but I did want to include that ahead of time. So you guys are kind of getting a preview um, and I'll dive in on the questions. So Let me, um, I, I think I can take them from, from here if you want, Brian. Yeah, if you um, want. I've got them up. What are the minimum requirements, i.e. insurance licensing? If you're like a real estate company, you need a real estate license. If mm -hmm. you're a uh, construction company, that might be what you're talking about. You may be bonded or not bonded. Uh, that that really uh, depends on uh, the uh, specific solicitation. As far as insurance, that's mm -hmm. going to be specific to the solicitation as well. I'll out on that very, very clearly. Yeah, you do want to re read the solicitation for what's required and what's expected, so that way you're not you're not deficient in anything when you're applying. Yeah, and, and using that matrix, like Brian suggested, on an Excel spreadsheet is a good idea. Also, all the requirements, mm -hmm. check, check, check. I need to do this. I need to do that. Uh, a minority-owned business, Hispanic, will get some advantage. Minority-owned, 
Miami Dade County is 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 race and gender neutral, so it's really the size of the company. In federal government, there's a women-owned small business, and then there's the uh, uh, that's not minority. There's the uh, 8A, but these certifications are all much more useful in some sectors than others. So that's something you would want to check, and you can do that through USAspending.gov, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we got another question here. Hello, my family. We have a trade exportation and importation company. Uh, we sell agriculture, commodities, and minerals. The commodities come from Brazil. Yeah, you can sell that here. Even under the uh, the uh, Buy America Act, actually, Brazil is a TAA-approved country. Mm -hmm. And I only have a few clients working with Brazil. It's not an easy company to tap into. Um, I don't know too much about the mineral side. But I can tell you on the agricultural side, there's there's a lot of opportunities in agriculture. No, no question there. Mm -hmm. uh, Broward yeah. County, we have we have Apex people in Broward County as well. Uh, and if uh, she or I ever get stuck, you know, we reach out to the other. So there's no problem there. We have a very good communication between all of us because there's just too much going on. All of us can't know everything. Are these fed or are these fed or state local? We've been talking about mostly federal, but uh, obviously, I mean, I'm sorry. There are opportunities in in, in state and, and local government in, in, in any any sector. No question about that, uh, or both, both. Okay, you answered your own question. <laughs> uh, ten ninety nine contractors can be used. Yeah, ten ninety nine contractors are used all the time. Uh, especially in IT and consulting, uh, not a problem whatsoever. Very, 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 very common. Um, manufacturing itself, okay. That was referenced the div that the manufacturer is an approved source. They do need to go through the approved source or become an approved source. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're in Hillsborough County, uh, we have, SBDC has 50,000 employees. Uh, Apex only has 500. We're, we're pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have one under University of South Florida in Tampa yeah. um, that they cover Hillsborough County. So you would reach out to the USF um, Apex, USF SPDC. Um, they do have one in our area. You can also email um, Leo that's that you got his contact information and he can help make an introduction to the um, our folks up north. Yeah, so anybody... Same, same question for the woman from uh, Cantrella, that she's not in Florida. Um, you would look in your area for Apex Accelerator or for an SPDC. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, once you're working with an Apex uh, a consultant, they'll help you with state and local, depending on, you know, exactly, you know, what states and and, and local you're, you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And I see Betsy has a question. I think that was it. I was looking for links to state and local. Seems like, um, you know, USA.gov is fantastic for that. USA.gov, if you go to uh, local government or government, you'll see that it lists every single city by state and every single county by state. It'll direct you directly to the procurement uh, office. The person you want to talk to when it's local is the procurement director, if you uh -huh. can, if they have one and they'll put you in contact with one of their buyers. They're not called contracting offices in the, in the local systems. So try to reach out to the directors at these different procurement offices. Yeah, and we can definitely um, help you with that. We do, Lewis does tend to focus on more of the federal contracts. Um, I know he dabbles a little bit on state and local um, where needed, but we do have other two other consultants that are really great under um, the SBDC that are focused on, actually we have three consultants that are focused on like state and local contracts too. So also federal as well. So we do have additional resources for you. Um, this is a question about mental health uh, and suicide prevention. There are a number, they're, they're, they're listed on their GSA schedules, but they're not GSA schedules, they're FSS schedules because they're actually managed by the VA. Uh, and they have, different categories from surgeons to psychiatrists to psychologists to everything else. Uh, that would probably be a good list to start working with because they have the contract with the government. I mean, how many people can they, can they possibly service at one time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, so I don't see any other questions. And I know a lot of times you're going to leave the webinar and you'll be like, man, I wish I would have asked this question. So if you do have any additional questions, um, please contact Leo. Um, Leo can forward the questions to Lewis or to me. You can give your tougher questions to Lewis and he can answer them for you. Um, anything that's really like an easy softball question, I can take that one um, on that. And I just want to thank you guys for being here um, from our center. We always say if you're doing something, you're not doing something else. So we appreciate you guys taking about an hour and five minutes out of your day um, to listen to the webinar. We will post the webinar on our YouTube page. Um, so it's accessible later. We will send you the PDF of the presentation. And um, I also would like to give like a virtual like uh, like high five or virtual um, applause for Lewis because Lewis is um, really like one of our secret weapons in terms of like his expertise, his knowledge, and just working with it. And every time I see one of your clients at an event, Lewis, they're always like, I love Lewis. He's so great. So um, I just love the service that you offer and um, the, you know, helping with our clients. And, you know, we've really seen a lot of like impacts and outcomes from the clients you're helping out. We have a great team here at the SBDC. Um, and we really just want to help small business. And, uh -huh. and, that, and that's great. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks to Lewis for being here. Thanks to Leo for being behind the scenes. And um, thanks to you guys again for taking the time. So we look forward to um, seeing you in the future. Take care. All right. Thanks, Lewis.